And so now understanding that our entire job with email is to train our customers on how to be our customers. It's to be congruent. And our email is just a visual representation of our clarity with our lighthouse and our avatar and understanding the customer journeys. We need to protect that email. Now, I'm going to give you another tangible example. And your pen should be feverishly writing these things down because these are all real world testables. I've done these in e-commerce companies, physical products, digital products, et cetera. So a lot of us are familiar with like the video launch model, right? We're like, hey, we have three videos, uh, Jeff Walker, PLF, a video launch, a webinar model, a video series model, right? And they're all the same. All of them are the same. We're like, hey, listen, I'm going to give you all this content for free, right? Just like I did for every one of you on this call. I'm going to give you all of these videos for free, but first give me your email, okay? And all I'm really doing is I'm going to play a numbers game, right? I want to pay an extra $2,000 a month for an email list of all the wrong people that haven't pre-qualified and haven't done the work. So I have the secrets for you, but I want you to give me your email and then I'll tell you what the secrets are, okay? Everybody does it. It's, it's been happening for years, right? And so what it ends up doing is it ends up killing your email list. And I'm going to tell you why. So uh, everybody here should be familiar with credit scores, right? So you have TransUnion, Experian, FICO, okay? There's credit bureaus that all independently track your credit scores. Did you know that there are also three independent email marketing bureaus that track your reputation score? And so think about email marketing like a credit bureau. There's a Equifax, TransUnion, and FICO, okay? And what it's doing, it's reporting on email providers, right? ConvertKit, Clavio. FusionSoft, all those other ones we don't mention, right? And then it's also reporting on you and your IP address and your from email. And so it's basically getting grades, okay? And so every single time a transaction happens with your email, I mean, like you send an email out, it's getting graded and it's grading the amount of bounces that come back. It's grading the amount of people that report it as spam. It's grading the amount of people that open it or don't open it. It's grading a thousand other factors that are too techy for me to even understand. But what it's doing is it's basically giving you a reputation score based on everything to do and tying it with you and your email provider. And that score is what dictates the success of your email three months from now, six months from now, and nine months from now. It's what dictates how many inboxes you hit versus the promo folder or the spam folder. It's an actual, actual thing. And so really what's happening is when you're building, sorry, Keith, giveaway lists or video launch lists or things like that, you're basically basically poisoning your credit score or your email score from the get-go. Why? Because we live in this myth that if we have a big email list, it's somehow going to create big revenue and big results. But it actually destroys your ability to communicate with your actual target customers because they're not seeing your email because your scores are so damn low. And so we're playing this like wide net, but what we're really doing is poisoning our ability to grow our companies. So Andre Chaperone's a really good friend of mine. He was a mentor and then I became his and now we help each other, but he's like the godfather of the autoresponder, right? Like 25 years ago, 20 years ago, he was teaching digital marketer, Russell Brunson, all of them how to do email marketing. What I love about Andre is Andre has won almost every affiliate contest in the world. So when ClickFunnels launched, Andre won the ClickFunnels affiliate contest. Like, I mean, signed up, oh God, like I think like 1,600 people. What's really funny about that is his email list was only 2,700 people. He had like an 81% conversion rate and won the ClickFunnels affiliate contest. Then he won a ClickBank one. And now Andre consistently does multiple seven figures a year using just email and teaching email. And most of the time, his list is less than 3,000 people. That should make all of your jaws drop on the floor, right? But when we think about protecting our email list, we have to remember that we have to proactively protect it, not protect it like all the internet marketers and bull crap that exists out there teaches us to protect it. Because right now, internet marketers of the industry, the marketing industry will have you think that it's completely normal to get a 15% open rate. It's completely normal to get less than a 1% click-through rate. I had somebody email me the other day and say like, my email's doing amazing. I'm averaging 8% open rate at scale. And I was like, first off, why did we make that okay? Like, would you literally be like, hey, you know what? Like, 
my parenting score for this week is 8%. I'm okay with it. I'm just going to keep going. You know, my husband's score is 8%. You know, my, my relationship score with my best friend is 16%. No. Like, if we text our best friend or our family and they don't literally open our text, we're like, oh, crap, what did I do wrong? What's missing for me? How can I do? And of course, there's nuances to it, but we would never accept it as okay that for our best friend, we text them 22 times to get one response. So we think about email, I need you to be proactive in challenging what people think are normal. Now, when we think about protecting your list, first thing is you need to make it easy for people to unsubscribe. Because there's one thing that I can't stand, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you ever want me to legally report your email for violating the law or making it difficult, make it hard for me to unsubscribe. I literally release the bloodhounds on your business. I will report you to every single agency in the world if I unsubscribe and get an email from you a couple weeks from now. It violates every single law that's in the world, and I see it all the time, right? I'll see people try to get sneaky. They'll have an unsubscribe link on the bottom but it'll just unsubscribe them from a sequence, not from the list. And I'm like, why am I still getting emails from these people? And I was like, are you that desperate that I've told you no, and you want to hold me hostage instead, and you somehow think that I'm going to give you my credit card after you're holding me hostage? Really like, think about the context of that. So the first thing is that we need to make it as easy as possible. And I mean easy. I've done this before where I've at the top of my email been like, if you don't want to be on this email list, click here before the content of the email even comes. Why? Because for all of those people that are on our email list, and let's say you're doing a, a launch or a webinar, you get 12,000 people to sign up. Only 1,000 of them are your customers. And of those 1,000 or 12,000 or 10,000, 1,000 of them might be your customers. Only 200 of them are going to show up on your webinar. And yet we're going to email all 12,000 of them. Hey, check the replay, check the replay, check the replay. You might squeeze out 1%, like maybe 1%. And your emails will never work again because you just had 100 spam reports. You had bounces. You had people not open your emails, all hit your credit score or your email score. And your emails for the next 6 to 12 months are never going to work. And it's on a downward trend because you can't clean it back up. And so you need to protect your list at all costs. So I'll give you a tangible example. All of you that are watching this call, whether you're watching it live or you're watching the replay that I'm selling you because you didn't make it in time. That's okay. We still love you. Um, I didn't ask for your email until after you had already consumed two hours of my content. Two hours, right? I gave you two hours of everything I needed you to know and understand for me to be successful at teaching you email. So basically, every single one of you became my ideal customer. You understand the lighthouse, you understand the avatar, you understand the customer journey. And only at the completion of that, I'm like, hey, will you do me a favor? Shoot us an email. We'll give you the survey. I'll bring you on this call. If I were to put all of you in ConvertKit right now and I would have sent out this call details, I would have got a 98% open rate and probably a 98% click-through rate minus a couple non-deliverables and people that fat-fingered their email. That would have been my reported score just because I protected on the front end, right? And so a video launch, for example, you're doing a three-part video launch. Let's say you're launching a new clothing line or a new supplement or a digital program. Everybody does this. Hey guys, I'm gonna share the three secrets to losing seven pounds in seven minutes in seven days. Give me your email and I'll give you video one. People have been doing this for years. I have a secret for you. Give everybody video one for free. Put it on a landing page and hide the opt-in button until the last 20% of the video. You're welcome. I just 10 x your conversion rates, right? And so when you think about it, you have this video. Let's say it's on a landing page, um, you know, georgebryant.com slash video one. I'm going to send people to that page anyways. I'm either going to send them to an opt-in and then link them to that page, or I'm going to send them straight to that page. One of them poisons my email list. One of them makes me a very, very successful businessman, okay? So video one, give them the link to that page and let them know that this is actually secret one. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch it. And only if this resonates with you, if you want more of this, if you want to play the game, at the end of the video, will the option for you to get video two pop up? Video two, give me your email because you've just pre-identified or pre-selected or self-selected yourself as my ideal customer and you've weeded it out. 
can you imagine how easy it is to run traffic to a page and then segment your list when you're like, nope, I'm pretty much sure that anybody who spent less than 20 seconds on that page isn't my customer. I just saved you half of your retargeting budget before you even spent it. Not to mention that everybody that is coming through is going to be setting the context for your score. And so for all of you that love to take your email list to make lookalike audiences, you're probably wasting 60% of your budget. Like, let me just tell you right now, if you're spending 10 grand a month on retargeting ads, you're probably wasting six grand retargeting people that never would have bought your product in the first place because the raw information that you're using to create those is poison. And so you need to protect your list at all costs, okay? So if you're doing things like lead magnets, right? Let's say you're doing giveaways. And I'll, Keith, I'll use this as an example. Let's say you have a list of people that have 20,000 people and you've done giveaways with them and you want to start engaging them. Well, you'll design a re-engagement sequence, which I'll talk about in a little while. And you'll give them the opportunity multiple times to raise their hand and say, hey, I'm interested in learning about your lighthouse. Okay. So then you're going to build an email list off giveaways. What do you do? Well, if you're building an email list off giveaways, you email them because you email them, hey, you're entered. You know, we're going to let you know when we pick a winner. Well, I just add one email. After I pick a winner, I send out one to three more emails. I'm like, and listen, now that you haven't won, I would love to teach you how to do A, B, and C or email you how to do A, B, and C. But I'll only do it if you explicitly raise your hand. Click on this link, i.e. a link trigger to basically tag yourself as like, I'm interested, and then you'll drop into my email list. Anybody who doesn't, I don't email. No means no, just for the record. And a non-response is still a response. If you ask and somebody doesn't answer, it means no. I personally want to build an email list of raving, loyal, dogmatic, cult-like people that salivate over every single word that I type. That's what I want on my email list. That's who I want on my supplement company, my diaper bag company, my protein bar company, my information company, the mastermind, you guys. I want people salivating over my email list, right? And so then the other side of protecting your list is cleaning it. And this is the most beautiful part. I make it really simple. Three months is my rule of thumb. If you have an open or clicked on my email in 90 days, which legally, because you know we had the legal question, you have to re-engage me anyways. Because if I haven't open and clicked on your email in 90 days, I have to be re-engaged. And I'll have to look up the law because it's changed since GDPR. It was 180. I think it's somewhere in between 90 and 180 now. I'll have to find the legal answers. But basically, I have mine set up. So if you haven't opened or clicked on an email in 90 days, I move you over to a re-engagement sequence. Okay? I'm going to talk about that later but I move you to a re-engagement sequence. What's the purpose of that? The purpose of that is to basically make sure and identify that you're still interested in learning from me and i.e. you're still interested in being in a relationship with me and giving you an opportunity to raise your hand again, self-select or bucket yourself, right? So if you've read the book, Ask or you know Ryan, you, know, you can utilize a lot of these principles, but it's to keep my email list clean and to make sure people are engaged. So in that, depends on how much you email people cadence-wise, and I'm gonna cover that with our machine, but if somebody hasn't opened or clicked on your last 10 emails, they're not your customer. If they haven't opened and engaged in 90 days, why are we protecting those email lists like we're Schmeagle and Lord of the Rings, right? Like, my precious. I see people all the time, I'm like, delete your email list. I literally watch them have panic attacks. Like, I can see them, like, start sweating when I'm like, get rid of them. And they're like, oh. and they, like, think they're, like, committing the end of life. And I was like, no, 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 no. Email's fluid right? Like you have a copy of the list. You've downloaded it. You could run Facebook ads to it if you wanted to. You can keep it. It's pixeled. They're there. They're in your ecosystem elsewhere. They follow you on social media. You have the ability to be in relationship with them. They've told you they don't want to read your emails and they don't want to listen to them. They don't want to click on them. So stop emailing them. Okay. And so protect your list, protect it, protect it, protect it. Make sure the people are on there want to be on there. Okay. And so now when we think about email, we have, first off, we have our lighthouse, right? Which is what we do, our company internally. Your email can't be effective if you don't know what you do, what you offer it, and all the ways that you offer it, okay? Then once you know that, then you have your avatar, which is the people you offer it to. Now, if you have people that you teach uh, CrossFit to, but then you have other people that you teach email marketing to, uh, you got to treat them differently, no CrossFitters are doing email marketing while doing pull-ups. But like I see this stuff all the time. 
if somebody comes into your business, like Roxelle keeps popping up on my screen, so I'm going to keep using her. If somebody comes into your business to buy a swimsuit, that doesn't mean that once you have their email address, you can sell them a supplement. That's not what they asked for. They gave you consent to come buy a swimsuit, right? And so protect that, but make sure that you're protecting your relationship as well. Look at every email subscriber like they're your husband or your wife or even better, your kids. Look at them like you're your kids, right? Would this help them go from A to B? Is this really simple for them to follow? Does this get them to their desired result? Is this what they asked for, okay? Once you understand all of that, you now understand that people on your email are going through a journey. You might have a seven-part email sequence set up, but because of my journey and your social and your blogging and your website and the entire machine that I will be teaching you guys in the course in the back end, once you understand that, you also understand that somebody might only open email three and email five. They might only open email one and email four, and you need to look at them like they're touch points in a bigger ecosystem, which is why congruency matters, right? And I see this a lot. People try to do like sneaky stuff or they're like, you only get it here. And I'm like, you're making some really dangerous assumptions when it comes to business. You're risking a million dollars in ad spend in assuming that everybody's going to open all four emails in a row. That's not how this game works at all. I don't want to make those assumptions so I don't play that game. And so we're methodical on what we do and we understand the machine and how it works, right? So then you want to protect your list. You know that everything that you're doing is training your customer on how to be your customer. You're training them on how to engage, right? So here's a quick question. If I want somebody to open my emails every single day, you sure as hell can bet that I have to email them every single day from the start of our relationship and also say, hey, listen, I plan on emailing you every day and you'll be able to consume my emails in 30 seconds or less because my goal is to give you a piece of value every single day. But I can expect somebody to open my emails every day if when they signed up for my email list, they downloaded a PDF, then they got a newsletter seven days later, a coupon seven days later, and then a sale seven days later. And then I'm like, oh yeah, you should open my emails now that I'm sending them every single day. You've already set the paradigm and context of that relationship and you need to maintain it. And so remember this. And I mean, everybody, we're about to take a, um, we're about to take a 10 minute break, but I want you to remember this and, and marinate on this right from the get-go that our job is to train our customers on how to be our customers. And that is in every single touch point that they have with us. And so if we have started something, i.e. we've created a paradigm because a lot of us have email lists or businesses and we tend to change that relationship i.e. renegotiate the terms, that has to be done to create something different. So remember that at every single type or every single touch point when it comes to our email with our customers, we're training them on how to be our customers. And so everything that you do matters to the language that you're using. For example, you have a landing page and you're going to give away a lead magnet. I love lead magnets. Lead magnets are my way to self-identify, get people to an after state, give them an easy win, and make a sale price completely useless because they've already tasted it, so they'll pay whatever it is. I love them. It allows me the ability to help people at scale, right? But you can bet your ass when you hit that landing page, and I'm offering you the seven secrets to lose seven pounds in seven minutes in seven days, I'm going to tell you on the page, probably in the title or right underneath it, and in the video, and on the button, that the second you opt in, that I'm going to be there with you every single day, and I'm going to be in your inbox every day at 8 a.m. And then when you hit the thank you page, I'm going to be like, I can't wait to see you in your inbox. There's one waiting for you. The subject line says this. And once you open it and confirm, I'll be in your inbox at 8 a.m. tomorrow and every day till you complete this. And then the transactional email that comes that delivers the PDF also says, hey, this is an email delivering your PDF. Just another opportunity to be in your inbox, but I just want to know, I'm super excited to see you at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, and the subject line will say this. That's before I even send email one, right? You have to remember, you're competing for attention, and you're competing against all of these other distractions, and you expect your customers to taste and achieve success, but we have to set them up to win. And if you take those extra steps to train them on how to be your customer, i.e. that you're there, that if they respond to the email, you'll respond within 24 hours, that if you say you're going to do something, you do it, that if you deliver it, you deliver it. And if you help them achieve it, you'll help them achieve it. If you're open and upfront about the negotiations of the relationship, it drastically 
changes their ability to become your customer. We've done this and watched LTVs, lifetime values, 10X, by simply adding 15 emails to the back end of a fulfillment sequence. Like somebody buys a product and we spend 15 days helping them use that product. We've taken retention on a, on a supplement, a collagen, from two months, upwards of two years, by setting the context in the first 15 days. Because we have created a habit and a neural pathway that associates us and value in the product with results, and we held them accountable. Because you've heard me say this before, and I'll say it again. Customers are not paying for just the products. They're paying for access and accountability because they want to achieve the result. And so if I have you trained that every time you see George Bryant or Lighthouse in your inbox, that I want you to care about your customers, that I want you to go one step deeper, I don't need you to open my email. I just need you to see my name and remind you what my lighthouse is. And at the end of the day, you know what my lighthouse is. It's that relationships beat algorithms. And I'm going to teach you how to do all of it. So when you see my name, there might be some nuggets for you in that email, but it might just be a touch point. You're like, I remember he said this, go do it, go do it, go do it. And it keeps you accountable and in a relationship with me because that's the context of the relationship that we set.